Okay, next thing we gotta do is figure out what our junk parts are from the good parts. We're gonna work on this counter shell so we can get all the stuff here for that. So this is our new counter shell. That's the old junky one. So whatever we're not gonna use, we get out of our way. So there's our second gear. There's our bushing. There's a snap ring. There's another bushing. We're not using that. The snap ring's pretty beat up. And maybe I'll reuse it. We'll see. Okay, there's our little gear. We are going to need that. Here's our new gear. We're going to have to check see if that fits. It's our old bushing we're not using. Green plug. Washer. We are going to be using that, but not right then. There's our old gear shift clutch. <coughs> Check this to make sure this fits. Do that right now. Nice fit. Look how tight that is. Tell that's all new. Just going to make sure it's nice and free, though. No tight spots. Okay, that's good. This is third gear. You gotta make sure it goes on here. It goes right here on this part shaft right over in here. Spins freely. And it goes on the other direction, but this is the bearing area. So it actually goes on like this because that's where the snap ring is. So it goes wears right here. So that's good. So the more of the stuff you pre-check before goes to put together the better. We're going to keep and not keep. Bearing's good. So this training was just redone so some of this stuff is still usable. Not all of it. Just some of it. There's another washer we're going to need. It's our third gear washer here. Okay, how's this fit on here? Pretty good. Okay, now this goes on tight this way. And third gear has a snap ring right here that adjusts the in play. So you can kind of pre check this a little bit if you want. This is our third gear snap, uh, thrust washer. Now the thrust washer should be basically even with that bottom of that snap ring groove right there. And that means your end play would be good. If you can see a bunch of the lip in there, then you're going to have a lot of end play. Like this one here, we're going to have about this much end play in it. So you got to make sure this is tight all the way down. And you check your end play. So it looks like this is going to have quite a bit of end play. Now the thrust, the snap ring for that was right here, which we kind of screwed up getting apart. But for right now, for checking things, we can go ahead and put this back down on here. It's good enough for checking things, it's just not very good. As long as it goes on there. In this case, it's not... Not going to do very well for a test bed here. Not working very well. Okay, so I'm going to get this one off of here. This is going to the junk pile. I'll have to get a new one. Which, uh, should be laying over here. I bought some, brought some extra parts here. Oh, I'm blowing up. Nope. Snapper ring. Here's our third gear snap ring. Looks like that now. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here.
goes down here like this. You spread it out a little bit by going over each spline. Get the tart of it going here, hold that with your thumb and just work it around like this. And when you go to put it on the bike, for real, it'll be the same procedure here being used. Try not to poke yourself though. You don't overstretch it. Okay, once it's on like that, then you grab the shift clutch, dog right here, stick it on that, slide it right down. That's a tool. Okay, so now you can assemble everything backwards like this. So if you put this in a hydraulic press, put pressure on it, you can see exactly what your end play is. Now in this case, everything's pretty loose, you can check it easily. See that end play? Remember I told you I had quite a bit in there? You have that much. That's a lot. So that's more than you really need. That can cause some issues. So, now to get this out, we got to take the snap ring back out. So, hopefully we don't cause any damage to it. Because we do kind of want to reuse it. Hook tool to be easier. I happen to have one of those. buried. I couldn't even see it was so buried. Now, this is a broken alley. It used to be about this tall. Scribe. This works perfect for this. So what you do is you get underneath here. Find your starting point. Right over here. So you come up under an angle. Get under it. And you just lift up on it. Of course this one doesn't want to do it because it's too broken. Yep. There it goes. Once you got one started, the rest of it goes pretty easy. Okay, pull it off. <clears throat> okay, now we can go find a thicker one of these. <clears throat> so I'll put that in a pile of stuff we gotta do. Okay, we got a bunch of used bearings over here that came out of it. These were in the high gear before. So these should be pretty well new. So let's see what size these are. Here to be loose standard. Yep, two tenths under. Okay, these are basically brand new rollers, so there's no reason why we can't reuse them. So we have a cluster gear here that is basically new. Pretty, clear, pretty close to it. And then we're going to use the new counter shaft right here. So this should fit up as standard. We'll find it. Okay, there's some thrust washers going here. Go inside of here. This is not it. This is the one that goes over here. And there's two snap rings that go in there. We're going to find all of those things. So, where's the washer? Not here. There used to be a used one floating around here. Let's see, I had a couple of used ports over here. I thought I had a couple snap rings lying around here someplace. There's one of them. 
there's the new parts I gathered out because I thought I brought some new stuff out already. Just got them hidden over here in the corner where nobody can see them. There we go. Here's our new parts. See, you wait a week or so, you get confused. Okay. So I already had a new third gear out. Put that back. Okay, so these are the little snap rings that go inside your cluster gear. It's a little groove down on the inside in there. I had to clean all the uh, JB Weld out of there, or if it was in there like JB Weld, I'm not sure what it was. Let me butcher this thing. Steve driver disappeared. Where to go? Here we go. Okay. One of these two has to go first because they're overlapping each other. There we go. Push it down. Boom, popped in. Make sure it's all the way in now. Make sure the clips are not overhanging each other. They're right up against each other. Make it sure it's no high spot. Okay, so that snap ring is in. So this inner thrust washer goes in there like that, pushes on that. Get the finger out of the way would be nice. And then the roller bearing goes up right against that. And those are just like that. Whoosh. Down there low enough. And that's how it works. And you put loose ones in here, and it'll work. Okay, let me do this other side here. I was hoping all the stuff would be out enough to clean out enough I could do this. And it looks like we will be able to do it. Now this snap ring is a lot shorter than the other one, or something's different. I'm not sure why. Okay, this one I can actually assemble in there like I'm supposed to. See, there's a big gap in there. So I can actually get a hold of it and rotate it and make sure it's in the groove. This one over here, for some reason, was way too wide. And it's flush, so I know it's in there, but it didn't want to go for whatever reason. There might be a bunch of trash in there, I don't know. My guess is a bunch of JB well stuck in there and I couldn't get out before. Okay, and this just wash in there like that. Okay, so those are good to go like that. Okay, now we got to check our, our heights of all the gears right here. Make sure our bushing goes on here. Just like that. This is our second gear retaining washer. Low gear is smaller. It's got a couple tits on it so it doesn't rotate. It's supposed to slide right down, which is not doing very easily. Each of these that's bent. Yeah, I think we had that problem before. Okay. Dab of grease right here. Don't want this stuff being on there dry. Takes a little while to get up on there. So if it runs dry, you can have a problem. Okay, there's that one. Put more grease on the outside of this bush. Now this is a full floating bush. That means that it floats floats on this gear and the other gear floats on top of it. That'd be second gear right here. Make sure you get a little bit of move on that also. Don't need much, just need a little bit. Now these you gotta make sure the dogs are good and sharp. Everything looks nice, it does. 
Keep going down here. And everything should rotate. Perfect. Getting over here under the tranny case. Too much crap in the way is the problem. Pull back a little bit might help too. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and take our washer here. Okay, this is our old snap ring that's kind of bent. This is our new one here that's good. Up into our washer. All right here's our washer, and this one looks broken. It's got a line right through here. It's broken. It's cracked right through there. So we're not going to use broken washers. All right, so I can go find me a washer. Wonderful. I haven't seen one of those broken in a long time. Okay, I also got to find me a third gear washer. So I'll go find both of these. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Pull this thing back a little bit. Okay, this is a 15 thousandths oversized third gear snap ring. And this is a second gear snap ring. I mean, a snap ring. Thrust washer, excuse me. Okay, let's see what these things are. Used to have all the different sizes, but right now I'm only finding the one. But at least it's a big one. That's what we're looking for. Might be too much. 15,000 is quite a bit. But it felt like we had quite a bit of gap, so... I don't know if we had 15,000 worth, though. Okay. Appears to fit on there pretty good. We didn't need that, did we? Snug. Okay. Let's go do a test on this under full load and see what we got. It's pretty tight, so I want to make sure it's not too tight. So I'm going to go over to the press and put an artificial load on this over here. Tell what we got. Kind of pressure ought to be enough. It's nice and right there, perfect. Totally free. Got a little wobble on it, but almost no employee. It's only about five thousand employee. Probably wouldn't hurt about a couple more thou, but I'm good with that. Okay, so that's good. So that's how you check to make sure you got what you need. Worst thing is have it all together, and then you find out it doesn't fit. That'd be a problem. Uh. Man, cold in this place. Cold and wet today. All right. So we know this works. Jump in this way. Okay. Snap ring off without destroying it again. Easier said than done. Yeah. I 
This one's just a little bit too fat to get under there easily. I have to get a different one. Okay, got a nice new one over here. Be careful you don't poke yourself. Okay, now this one goes underneath the snap ring pretty easily. So now you just see if we can get it to pop out without being a problem. There we go. You stick it under and leverage it down. It pops it right up. The key is to make sure it doesn't pop back in on the other side. There we go. We just push it off. Okay. That's all set. So that's our third gear stuff. So put that over there for third gear. Okay, so the main shaft is now fitted. Everything's clearanced on that. Okay, now we're back to our second gear part here. This is the one that was a should be a good one. See that falls right in like it's supposed to. The other one we're fighting it quite a bit, so that's a good sign there's something wrong with it. It's broken. That is a good sign. Okay, now before I put that on there. The second gear is not adjustable, there's only one. I don't want to put this on dry. So a little more grease. Now I don't know if this grease is soluble with oil, so don't put a lot of it on there. Just enough on there to do the job. Transmission is going to chew it up anyway no matter what, but in a motor you got to be really careful about using grease. It can plug up stuff and if oil doesn't uh, break it down, it'll stay in holes and plug them up. Just like silicone would do. Okay. So this is our snap ring. That's our good one. Yeah, kind of good one. Okay. It's round. Okay, CMD, just kind of work these things around a little bit. screwdriver you put it in on here down the groove and just pull out a little bit with your thumb like this and it pops the ring right on down there okay once you get it down down there this one popped up so I'm do the same thing right here Let's pull this up a little closer so you stick it in there just pull over a little bit so it drops in and you take your shift dog and you shove it on down Pull it up, slide a little bit, make sure it's in there, it is, and this thing is tight. Oh yeah, this is really tight. I think this one we had before it was real tight, remember? Okay, so this is not going to fly. So we basically have negative clearances on things right now. So we need to come up with some clearance. We have to cut at least 10 thou off this gear to get some clearance. That gives us only five. Probably cut more like 15. Now the problem is this snap ring just popped in pretty tight. So we're gonna probably wind up destroying it trying to get it out of here. So let's see if it can do this without damaging it too awful much. Okay, got under it on this one side here. Come over here and do the same thing. Pull up on it a little bit, not too much. Pull that out. 
get on the other side here. If you're lucky, the other side didn't just pop right back in there. I think it did because I'm not on it. I'm underneath. Kind of pop back in there. Kind of awkward doing this. Come out of the next one. Alright, you can't do this like this. You have to have a stable platform and everything's moving so it ain't stable. It's time to get something stable. Let's go over here. I got something that'll stabilize it. You got two things. You got a vise and you got a lathe chuck. So most people don't have a lathe chuck laying at home, but they do have a vise. So we're gonna use a vise. So all I gotta do is hold this thing. this direction. Okay, now we do the same thing, but now it's not going to be flopping all over the place on my butt. So we can do it a lot easier. This is being difficult because the snap ring is jammed in there pretty good. Most of the time you destroy these snap rings anyway when you take them out. Obviously I'm trying not to do that because I just got done putting a new one in here. Okay, it's coming up. Gears in the way a little bit too. Okay. That was being a pain. Okay, that's off now. Okay, so snap ring got a little bit bent up. Okay, this here. Should be flat. So we can find out if it's flat or not. Wipe the grease off of it. Okay, let's put 
over in the table. And we'll see if it's how uneven this thing is. Appears to be relatively flat. See the push on doesn't wobble up and down. There's a little bit on this side, but not too bad. So it has a little bit of a cup shape to it, but not too bad. Fairly flat. So when they punch these things out, they get a little uneven. So this is the side they punch through, which bowed it up a little bit. So it's high on the inside edge here a little bit. It's probably only about two or three thou, but it makes a difference. Okay, so now I gotta take this gear over here, which is way it's too thick. And we're gonna have to cut it down. So where's our washer at? So let's see if we can see what the problem is. Okay, that appears to be a fairly good fit. What right in there right now? Pull back a little bit. So the washer is not hitting on something that's unevenly flat. It's against the shoulder that seems to be pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to come on this side here. We're going to cut this down. Now we can either grind it down or we can cut it down. So it's kind of a toss up which one to use. Grind easy works a little bit better because these are probably heat treated pretty good. So we're going to go grind it. So we'll be back in the grinder in a minute. Okay, we're back. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grind this thing down a little bit. So we're going to measure it, see what we need to do. Ooh, cold back here. Okay, how am I going to measure this thing? Okay, looks like we're about five eighths thick. Could hold it flat, about six twenty six, six twenty four. 626, 625. Okay, so we got our number to go by. We want to take off probably about 15 thou. Need at least 5 thou for sure so we can turn it and probably 5 to 10 for clearance. So if I get down somewhere in that area, I'll be happy. Okay, so I'm just going to grind this. I'm going to spin this a little bit as I do it. Try to keep it flat. Try to use even pressure as you do it. Okay, what did we take off? We took off nothing. That's what we took off. I think we got thicker there. I'm at 632 now. And 621. Yeah, high spot. 21. 19. 19. 19. So we took off about 5,000. Okay, so we can do that a little bit more. Alright, that should put us down to about 13, I think. 16, 16, 16, 18. 16. Okay, not quite where I want to be yet, so take some more off. The key is to measure it every way the same way each time. 13 and a half, 13, 13 and a half, 13 and a half. All right, that's uh, 13 pounds we're taking off. Three, four, I should get at least five in play. And then, uh, we're going to have a little extra. I'm going to get on a 10. That'd be 15. I took 13, 12 off. And this, I don't want to do that or not. I think I'll leave it at that. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, get all cleaned up because I got grit and stuff all over it. Me, this, everything. So we get everything clean. Be back. 